This is Ryan Elliott for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. We're down at York Hall this evening for the MTK Golden Contract quarterfinals. With me, Sonny Edwards. Sonny, thank you for joining us. How are you, mate? Yeah, all good, all good. All good, mate. Glad to hear. Uh, I just wanted to start by talking about the contract tournament, uh, the, the format of it, etc., and your thoughts on it. Very exciting for these fighters trying to build a name for themselves and trying to set themselves up as well. A lot on the line. I believe it's a five-fight deal over two years. Should you be successful? Your thoughts on this format? Yeah, it's great. And you know what? It's really given a good opportunity, you know, to the fighters. A lot of these fighters in these tournaments are the ones that, you know, haven't been getting uh, opportunities they perhaps deserve, you know. Obviously, none of these fighters have promoters, otherwise they wouldn't be in this, you know. The, the reward is that big promotional deal at the end of it. So it's really good. Like, just in tonight's one, you've got Dave Oliver Joyce, Lee Wood, Jazza Dickens, um, Ryan Walsh, just to name a few of them. But um, all good fighters in their own right, recognised fighters as well, that have boxed on the big stages for some reason have had little stop starts and whatnot, and this is the, the three fights now to really, you know, take lead of the career again. Um, don't get me wrong, it's very hard, very risky. I know that if they lose, they've got to fight again. Um, and, you know what I mean, to get to the semis, they've got to do a third or fourth fight, so it's very risky. You can come out with two losses on your record, but I think all these fighters that have entered the competition, um, they know what they're up, for, up against. They know it's going to be hard and the winner's going to rightfully get a, a big reward and I think that's what box is all about. Now before we move on to talking about yourself, uh, I just wanted to ask you who, the make, who you make the favourite of tonight's Amen. Uh, a lot of people have picked Lee Woods, some have leaned towards Ryan Walsh. Who do you make your favourite? Me personally, I mean I train with Lee Wood at Upper Still City Gym. We're not with the same coach but we train together. Um, I was shocked when he picked Dave Oliver Joyce for me. I'd edge towards Dave Oliver Joyce because he was such a fantastic amateur and he's looked great as a pro. But Lee Woods bang up there as well. I think there's every potential. A winner of the main event tonight, you know, Wood versus Joyce will, will, will go on to win it. But that said, there can, so much can happen. Do you know what I mean? Like you can't write off Ryan Walsh for all, all that he's done over the years. Um, maybe the other fighters are a little bit fresher. Who knows? I don't know. I think this we're going to find out today. We're going to get a good idea today, anyway, at the very least. But then again, Styles make fights. Um, these unknown quantities like the Cuban, the Spanish lads, like you just don't know how good they really are. And if they're probably coming to have it, which I'm, I'm sure they are, then one of them might walk away. You just don't know. Let's talk about you. Last time out, we saw you against Hugo Resendo Guaneros. Uh, a flawless performance. I know you busted your hand and sort of had to ease off for the final half of the fight. How is the hand, first of all? It's still a little bit swollen, as you can see. Um, I haven't started punching back yet, and it's three weeks now. Um, I'm looking to be out like mid to late December. No, just before Christmas, so it'll be bangers on by then. Um, but yeah, just, you know, I've enjoyed a holiday. I went, did some meetings and, and had a few days off over in Dubai. You know, MTK sorted us out massively and, and looked after us more than I could even put into words. Um, so buzzing, buzzing with that. Come back and, you know, looking to get back into training next week and then just sort of tick on from there. Um, don't know who I'm fighting, don't know where I'm fighting. I know I'll be in London, but I'm just looking forward to it no matter what happens. Now, you've had a lot of time to reflect on that last performance back down at Flyweight. How did you feel at the weight and, and how did you feel performed given the injury as well? Yeah, I mean, I'm always more of a natural Flyweight than anything else, so it is what it is. I, I've always known that. Um, I'm down at Flyweight now, but I, who knows where I'll be at my next fight because wherever the opportunity goes, I'll go, to be honest. I'm not, I'm not just committed only to flyweight you know I mean I've got the world rankings now at flyweight but that doesn't mean that I won't pop up and down go where the belts and the money is to be honest you mentioned you don't know who you're fighting I'm going to throw a couple names at you we'll start with uh, someone who was out very recently in my hometown Newcastle Andrew Selby did he catch his performance put down twice but still managed to get the win I didn't um, a lot of people were sort of tagging me you know doing that whole oh he's past it now it's a load of bollocks to be honest you can't write someone off on one bad performance and if you do, you're very silly to do so. Um, Andrew Selby's world class. He's a fighter that I've looked up to since I was like a 14, 15 year old kid, maybe even before that. So um, getting him the chance, you know, have a, a good fight with him when we're both at a good stage of our careers, that would be big for me because like when he was qualifying for the Olympics, being number one in the world with WSB, I was, I don't even think a national champion as a, a junior or a schoolboy at this time. Um, so like I said, he's always someone I looked up to, so he's never someone I'll talk down because there's certain things in my style today that was very heavily influenced by watching Selby and watching what he did to opponent. So um, I don't think he's anything but past it. I think maybe he needs to change a few things in his camp. You know, having your trainer not in your, in your corner, I think in a hard fight is a big thing. 
maybe he needs a more experienced coach. I don't know. You know, there's a lot of whispers. Um, but like I said, if he's happy, then he's happy. Then that's all that matters. Um, I feel like he maybe needs to stop going into these fights thinking he can just wipe everyone out. Because when they're tough and they come, you, you can't just throw bombs for 8, 10 rounds, 12 rounds. You can't do that. Um, but yeah, Andrew Selby sold I'd love to fight. But like he said, he won't fight me for anything less than a world title. So wait until one of us gets it and maybe we can get it on. Now, I don't want to keep you for too much longer, Sonny, because I know we've got another fight about to start and you're here to watch the fights, not to speak to me. That said, a name I'm seeing bounded around a lot on, on your Twitter and, and being talked about a lot. I just want you to clarify something for me. Tommy Frank. There seems to be a lot going off about that potential fight between you and Tommy Frank. Can you just explain what's going on there? Absolutely nothing, to be honest. They got offered the purse, the purse bids got ordered, and he pulled out two hours before. That's it. Um, I'm ready to fight anyone and anyone in Britain. Um, you know, make a good offer. I'm earning XYZ to fight Guineros, XYZ to fight Matos. So it's got to make sense. But my promoters believe in me, and uh, BT believe in me, that they'll get these fighters over. But... The simple fact is, the phone's ringing and they're not answering, they're not getting back. I've got that on good authority, do you know what I mean? Um, they've tried to make the fight purse bids, they've tried to make the fight of him directly and it's not happened, so it's just something I'm going to hold my breath for, do you know what I mean? Um, he squeezed past a kid that had only turned pro at the beginning of the year, so he's not even on my radar, to be honest. Now, when I spoke to Frank Gorin about yourself after your last performance, he told me you were one of the hardest fighters in the country to match. Going into next year when you're all healed up, do you feel confident still that you'd be able to get, get towards world level and get in amongst the world title mixed up? Yeah, do you know, the bigger my name, the bigger stock I've got, the more money I'll bring in. And that's when I'll start getting these fighters. I think I can only take it as a compliment that all these fighters are waiting for me to get to the next level before they want to fight me. I don't think they're scared of me. Like, no, I don't think none of these fighters are scared of me, but I can make fighters look silly and make them look quite useless at times. And I think that's what people try to avoid. And if they're going to get into the ring of that, then at least they want to get paid well for it. So... Like I said, I'm headlining BT shows and chief supporting and on big O2 arenas, so I can't complain. Do you know what I mean? I've, I've had five fights in 11 months and all title fights, all TV fights, so I'm in a good place. Before I let you go, Sonny, I'm sure you'll be getting asked a million times about this night. Your brother Charlie, rumour has it he's vacated his WBC world title. Is that the case to your knowledge? Um, you're asking the wrong brother to start with. I generally couldn't tell you. Um, there's still, there's still quite a few options on the table, so I don't know whoever's jumped the gun and put that out there, but as of now, right now, I know Charlie's still world champion. Nothing's been vacated, um, so I really don't know. I've seen it on Twitter earlier, getting tagged in it, and nothing's changed or no conversation has been had from any time from now to the last three, four weeks, so I don't know how it's jumped out, you know. Um, but yeah, he's over in, in Cyprus at the moment, so... I think that's the least of his worries. But as it stands right now, he is still the WBC World Champion, so I don't know what to tell you. I don't know where it's come from all of a sudden today. Well, I don't know why it hasn't been coming for the last week or two weeks or three weeks or tomorrow or the next. I don't know what it is that made it today. I don't know who announced it or released it first. I couldn't tell you. OK, Sonny, I've just heard the first bell there, so I'm going to let you shoot, but thank you very much for speaking to Boxing Social. 